what the Supreme Court of Canada has to say. So uh, in Canada, uh, a, a BC doctor, Dr. Uh, Brian Day, uh, brought, a case, um, brought a case to the court, basically claiming that uh, under, under the Canadian uh, socialized health care system, uh, too many people are in line waiting for critical, uh, for critical care. And um, that there should be an option for those people waiting in line for critical care to be able to um, hire uh, a private doctor to, uh, to, uh, to address their needs, to, to give them the treatment. That is what he was arguing for, is to create a parallel private system, uh, but focused primarily on emergencies, primarily on people who really need care and who can't get it. Um, he based his lawsuit uh, on, on the idea that the current system violates two, the, the, the uh, I guess, uh, Canada doesn't have a constitution, has a charter, which is similar to a constitution, and um, it violates two charter rights, uh, the right to life, liberty, and uh, the security of the person. That is, it does not allow people to pursue their lives or their liberty, and it certainly doesn't allow them to secure their human well-being. Um, this is not an attempt, unfortunately, <laughs> to completely undo the Canadian uh, universal health care system. This was not an attempt to completely undermine, again, unfortunately, the uh, socialized health care system nature of the Canadian system. This was an attempt to add on top of it, add on top of it. Right? And... Um, It to add on top of it. And the Canadian Supreme Court uh, rejected it uh, and, and, uh, and uh, turned him down. Um, yeah, it, you know, as, as, as Dr. Day said, uh, quote, wealthy Canadians have always gone down to the United States for care. We know all those who drive down to, to, to uh, the Mayo Clinic, uh, not that far from the Canadian border. Um, what the, what the Canadians have always gone down to the United States for care, but what do middle-income and low-income Canadians go? The answer is they're not allowed to go anywhere. They stay and suffer and die on wait lists. Um, the, the Canadian Medical Protection Act prohibits doctors from billing the government for work they do in the public system while also earning money for private clinics as well as billing patients uh, on their insurance companies. They argued these sections are unconstitutional because they prevent patients from accessing private medical treatment when public systems sometimes can't provide timely care and argued patients have a constitutional right to pay for private care when wait times in the public system are too long. Um, of course, the, uh, the Supreme Court basically, uh, today's decision affirms our ongoing efforts to preserve and uphold a public care system and confirms the legal arguments heard uh, at the BC Supreme Court and BC Court of Appeals. You know, this is from the uh, health minister, the British Columbia health minister. So uh, really horrific situation in Canada uh, where uh, long wait lists, just like in England and just like in uh, pretty much every socialized healthcare system, people wait in long lines uh, to be treated, to get care, uh, uh, nobody cares about the individual. Nobody cares about individual life. I mean, this is what's common. What what is the what is the what what is the same about the abortion story in the United States and the story about Canada? What unites the two stories? What is the philosophical principle that you can see in play here in both of them? Well, in both of them, what you can see is uh, is altruism and collectivism. Uh, if you're a woman, you're expected to sacrifice the rest of your life for the sake of some higher cause, some higher purpose. Uh, you know, the purpose of, uh, uh, you know, Christian ideologues believing that your purpose in life is to bring uh, babies into the world. Uh, you're supposed to put aside your life, your plans, uh, your future uh, for the sake of a fetus, for the sake of an embryo. Uh, it, it is, uh, it, you know, you're supposed to uh, become a mother even if you don't want to become a mother. The state is going to impose on you motherhood. Uh, in Canada, it's exactly the same. You're sick. 
You're supposed to wait in line. You're supposed to sacrifice for the sake of the system, uh, to sacrifice for the sake of those who might be in front of the line, for the sake of those who maybe can't afford the private health care that maybe you could afford if it was made available. Uh, you're basically sacrificing for the state, and the state knows best. In both cases, the state knows best for you. The state knows best about your health care. The state knows best about your status as a mother or not. The state knows best how you should engage in your life with your values, uh, what your future should be. You do not have, in both the United States and in Canada, under these doctrines, you do not have a right to your own life. You do not have a right to liberty. You certainly do not have a right to pursue your own happiness. This is the exact negation of uh, uh, what, what the, the abortion laws and uh, socialized medicine in Canada are the negation of everything the Declaration of Independence stood for. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.